Hi, I don't know how much dancing you all caught on the other end, but hi, good evening. Um, welcome to the IBD and Ostomy Support Show. I'm Louise, aka uh, Crane's Virgin. So, um, how is everybody coping in this hot weather? I can tell you now, I am not coping great, and it is. It's like I've walked into hell, I think, would be the correct <laughs> description. <laughs> the heat loving is it. horrible. Loving it. Oh, uh, no, you've been loving it. Well, um, what have I been up to? So, I've come down with a stinking cold. Um, I found out last week I wasn't on, I'm ever so sorry, but um, I found out my Crohn's was going into a flare and um, I was drugged up and I got told by all my lovelies here that um, I need to rest. So I did. <laughs> um, I wasn't too sure about tonight because I'm literally, the heat um, is just made my, my chest up and I've got a cold and all sorts. And uh, yeah, even trying to get to the toilet at the moment, I feel like I'm going to lose a lung every time I cough. Um, I went to see my surgeon on Tuesday. I will be joining the Barbie Back Club with Steve come October. I will find out my operation date on the 25th of July when I have my um, pre-op. Uh, scary so, times. So it's a good chance that I might beat you then. Yeah, you, you yeah, will beat you me. Will. You'll beat me by about a month. <laughs> Um, so what did I find out? So um, Dr. Jarakashan, he's a very capable colorectal surgeon up at Guy's and Um I'm a bit of a difficult case, but more, more difficult just because of the amount of surgery that I have had done and the scarring caused by the surgery and then the adhesions that have been caused by my Crohn's. So he equated getting into me as the equivalent of taking a jackhammer to concrete. <laughs> Um, so when I have the operation done, um, my stoma has been refashioned but not recited. So I will go from a loop ileostomy to an end ileostomy. Um, I'm going to have a, and I'm, I do apologise because it's before the before the water, but I'm going to have a shite load of scar tissue and adhesions removed. Um, my kidneys and my is it urethra are going through a gigantic ball of scar tissue. My uterus stone is sticking to adhesion scar tissue and my large bowel, but the large bowel's been taken out. And I've got to have one final finger and camera up where the sun doesn't shine to find out if the perianal Crohn's uh, part of my disease has impacted my rectum and my sphincter because dependent on, if it has or not, is dependent on how they close up my bottom. So whether they sew it or leave it open or pack it or half close it. It's, it's a minefield, really, but um, I'm looking at about 10 to 12 hours for the operation. So everyone's going to be a nervous wreck. I'll be all right. I'll be asleep. <laughs> mm. uh, don't get me wrong. I will be nervous, but I normally have a shit fit about half hour before they're due to take me down to theatre. And it's done when I'm with the surgeons and with the anaesthetist and not with my family. So they go on their merry way and go and chew away on cigarettes. Um so uh, today we are going to be celebrating the 70 years of the NHS and why we are thankful for the NHS. We'll also just be talking about the heat, the heat and how to cope with um, dehydration and that sort of thing and how to keep on top of fluids. And oh yeah, my blood's come back, my electrolytes are all over the place and I'm dehydrated. So I'm currently drinking concentrated rehydration solutions in uh, water to try and pick my levels up so I don't end up in hospital on an IV. Um, and Fortunately, Steph is not joining us this evening. She's just having a rest with the heat and she's been busy with work, so she's a little bit tired. So we'll send our love to Steffi and we love you. And um, we'll, she'll hopefully see you next week and we'll chat with you anyway. Um, I'll put, hand you over to Rachel. Hi, I'm Rachel of Rocking Two Stomas and I've got these annoying headphones that keep not working. <laughs> so I'm fiddling. Um, Fair. Okay, so what kind of week have I had? I've had a really busy week. Um, I had a quiet weekend because I was made to rest um, because I knew I was traveling to Exeter on Monday. I met up with a consultant and sort of talked about uh, possible research that's going to be taken officially, which is really exciting and where I want it to go. So I finally, I, I feel like the whole Eurostomy community has been listened to and we finally got somebody and a team that are going to take the research Berber, I'm going to be able to expel that, so I'm really excited. So that I did that, and then I went to a coloplast event on Tuesday, uh, which was to the local stomach care nurses, and I just um, shared my story and and working with coloplast. 
And then I stayed an extra night and I just sort of looked around Exeter and I love it. It's such a wicked city. I really, it's a bit of me. I could see myself living in Exeter. It's just, it's so quirky, like the cathedral, the cathedral, the cathedral, the cathedral, the cathedral. And, <laughs> and it was like a really, it's, I think it's quite small. And I don't think I would ever move from Bournemouth, but it was just a nice, it was a nice feeling. I like to go and go there and explore a bit more. Um, and I'll come back now and I'm just sort of, doing a little bit of work about resting and tomorrow I've got spa and yeah I've today my website's gone down my <laughs> nasty this will make you laugh my domain my domain thing relapsed I didn't realize and the whole oh, thing's gone down my all my emails I bet that has gone destroyed down. you today isn't it so it's literally been it's <laughs> literally been like a bit manic because I can't get any of my emails. So everybody on LinkedIn have been going, we're trying to email you back. Cause today I went through all my emails of all the ones I missed. I must have sent about 20, 30 emails and then they couldn't reply. So, oh, so that's been a headache. But we sorted it. I've renewed it. It's up running again. And my website website guy, Joe, he helped me today. So thank you. He won't be watching, but that was that was good. Um, I just, I, I'm, I realised when I was away, actually, how I'm still not 100%. I'm still quite tired. I've, I feel mentally better than I did. I feel like I'm getting there. But I feel I do feel like I'm sort of a bit separate from people at the moment. So I'm trying to build that back. But I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sort of concentrating more on myself and uh, doing what I need to do at the moment. So that's all good. And uh, I don't think I've got anything else to say. I, next week, next week, oh, next week, actually. I've got two interesting things. I've got a talk with the local Cupid in, in Pool. And I'm also, I don't know if you remember, do you remember I talked about, this must have been last year, I think October when I was septic. And I had an ultrasound and they, they shamed this guy in the radiology department. Do you remember me talking yeah, about Yeah, I remember it? you talking and about I, And I wrote, and I wrote, and I didn't know how to deal with it. And I wrote a yes. note saying my phone uh, number. The you know, chapter I, in the, uh, yeah outside wasn't they in one of the halls yeah, and, they, and they were sort of t taking the mickey out of his smell <clears> saying that, talking about the worst patient in front of me and him so i wrote anyway so they want me to go in on wednesday and talk to them about it i got to do two talks one 12 30 one one basically saying what i experienced and like what they should remember in radiology as a healthcare professional so it's oh, quite good. funny because i i used to work in therapy radiography and now i'm with now like i'm the diagnostic therapy had like a battle of each other because it was like diagnostic therapy so i'm going in and i'm just talking about remembering what it's like to be a patient when you're waiting for an investigation that you've probably waited for a long time and to actually keep a bit of rapport not just a number so that so i'm that'd be i'm quite nervous because i don't know how to go about how much detail to say but we, we'll see i think is it's good that they they dealt with the the uh what's it called the, really good, yeah. that'd be I mean, I think it's good for all of us actually that if you ever do experience anything in hospital that isn't okay mention it and complain about it and all i did is in the little boxes i just wrote a note because i i didn't i didn't think the guy had seen so i didn't want to upset him i wrote a note and i explained what happened put the time put my number and then within a couple of hours i had a phone call and then i spoke to the, the service manager then i spoke to pals and it was they ex expelled it and they sorted it out so I think it's for all of us. So if you ever yeah. witness anything, my experiences with pals have been brilliant. Are they not to do with me so much? It was to do with Riley when he was born um, and his kidney condition mm. and the care and that he was getting or not getting. Um, but they've always been brilliant. Are they? Yeah, they're I'm biased, aren't they? And they mm -hmm. have to listen to you. That's the fact. You know, you have got to say so. It's a really important, I think, to have powers available. Yeah, I've heard of them like coming up towards when people are actually in patients. Mm. Um, if you contact them while you're actually in, they will come up and see you on the ward and stuff as well, which is good. Mm -hmm. I think it was more, it was the fact that the service manager called me of the radiology department and called me quite a few times and they went on special training and, and they actually sorted it, which I've never had that. I, I've witnessed things before, but there's never been action. And then mm -hmm. now they want me to be part of the radiology patient panel that they're setting up because of it. So it's like sometimes knock-on effects happen by just sort of standing up for people. And yeah, but anyway, I'll pass yeah. it to Natalie. <laughs> Sorry, I've just re rabbited away. <laughs> Got lots to be proud of this week. Um, hi, I'm Natalie, um, the Spoonie Mummy. Um, we've had a busy one. 
uh, with the kids mainly. Um, I had the boys at the weekend and we decided to, on a Saturday to take them out for the day. So we went up to Matlock and I'm really gutted because Steffi is not on. And she always says it, it's so much to do with Red Dwarf. And I hate that program, but she'll say it. She's really? watching, she'll know what I mean. Yeah. She likes says Matt Locke. I don't know what it, what it is, but every time I say we've been there. But um, no, it was really good. We went up on the cable cars and then there's caverns and stuff where they did lead mining. So we went down, there's two of them up there and did like the guided tours. And the boys absolutely loved it. It was really good. Wow. Um, knackering, but really good. Um, and then um what do we do on sunday i think we just chilled on sunday more than anything uh we did go up i took them up to my grandma's grave for the first time um obviously they didn't do the funeral or the interment or anything but we took some flowers and stuff up there so that was oh. good um and then tuesday we had layla and um the weather was actually still at a nice heat then although it was warm it was cool enough to be out in the garden with her all day without worrying that she was going to overheat or anything but I have really struggled these past two days. Um, trying to keep my fluid intake up has become like a full on mission every day. Um, and I've just felt really grotty and groggy and not too great. So um, just been mainly resting. I went out with my friend today for lunch, which was lovely, a little catch up. The dog's been um, misbehaving. I think it's the heat. Really? Um, he managed to get all my blogging notebooks and oh, ripped no. them to shreds last night. Oh no! So um, he's in the bad books. He's laid down here at the He's minute, in the doghouse, he is he? <laughs> he's in the doghouse, yeah. <laughs> but, um, Matt, can I ask, you've been struggling to keep on top of your fluids. Have you found yourself really tetchy this week? Yeah. Oh yes. Really tetchy and really like spaced out. Like my brain fog can get quite bad anyway, but Steve will like say stuff to me and he's like, Natalie, like he said, he always says that I'm in a world of my own and things happen around me and I've got blinkers on and all that, but it's been especially bad and I just can't be doing with anything. I'm just- I've been, I've been a nightmare to live with this week apparently. I'm snapping over anything. <laughs> yeah. But it's been, I mean, I drink quite a bit anyway. I always am quite good at keeping on top of my fluids. But it's just been, I had my methotrexate Tuesday night as well. And I don't think that's helped. Um, I've not been sleeping great because it has been so hot. Yeah. It stays hot so late, doesn't it? Like even like now when it should be cooling down, it's still mm. so warm. It's really not warm, isn't it? I've not really been, I was the same Natalie, I've not been sleeping well at all and I got. I bought myself a little fan for my side, but I'm finding that I'm getting, I've got a lot of uostomy pain, so I'm hoping I don't have like an infection brewing, because I, I am struggling with the, with the water, like I've got it, I've had to go back to freezing water because I struggle with the normal water, Steve, I've gone back to the semi-frozen. I think it's fine as long as you're not drinking hot cups of tea in between. What, like that? That's, that's, that's like... Uh, that, you see what I mean? And, and she wonders why her teeth crack. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway. Back to you, over to you. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm I think I'm finished. I was just gonna say I've been struggling with Riley's a really good drinker and he has to drink lots because of his kidney condition. Um and he's really good at drinking, so it's never really been too much of an issue. I've always said if Leo was the one with the problem, we'd struggle a lot more because we have to fight to get him to drink. But this weekend, even he, and I don't know whether it's just the heat bothering him or what, but I really struggled to get him to drink. And I was like, you've got to do it. Because especially with your kidneys, you're going to get dehydrated really easily. Absolutely. But, um, but yeah, but no, I've been, apart from, like I say, being a bit of a misery guts the last couple of days because I'm too hot. I've been fine. Uh, I've, to I've, I've been ripping everybody's heads off. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Steve, aka Bag Daddy with the hashtag. Um, no, it's not what have I done this week? I uh, I went to uh, went to Woolacum, had a drive to Woolacum with my pal, camping. The last time I went camping, I was about fifteen, so at least good good ten years ago. How did you um, find it with your stoma? Because I've been camping. You know what? It's brilliant with the kids. Um, but that's the only thing that worries me now. You know what? I think you're, I think it's, you're better off having a stone when you're camping because you haven't got to sit on any any toilet seats. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> <I suppose. laughs> you know what I mean? It's kind of like uh, now like the, the shower was... dash with the 
towels you can put on the floor and the ones that you don't put near your body mm. and <laughs> but I, would, I would have to empty i would have to empty like every hour and a half so i'll be back you know and what? back and forth <laughs> on the way we come off the motorway and uh and we didn't want to stop at our services. We was about 20 odd miles away from the services. And I just pulled along the side of the road and did a, an empty into it into a, like a little black bag. No Steve's problem done at it all. On the side of the motorway before. When it's he like, uh, you, yeah, you couldn't do that if you had a normal toilet in habits, could you? No. Do you know what I mean? I would, you'd be, people would be bibbing you and all sorts. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Steve, I've done it on the, I've emptied on the hard shoulder. If you've got to do it, you've got to do it. We, we, drove, we, we took our bikes, so, so we went for a cycle. And, I mean, this cycle, the hill, was like about 90 degrees. I thought I was going to die. Oh, God. And, then, and, then, and then on the ride, on the cycle back, it was like, it was heart attack material. You could, you had to, we had to walk in the road because there's no pavements. But it was, it was really nice. Uh, sunbathe. Went, went topless with the sunbathe. Had my bag out <laughs> representing. Um what else have I done? I've started my running, started my cardio because I'm I'm gonna do a marathon. I did one. I did one when I was eighteen. I'm gonna do another one. That's I'm gonna get into into shape, into running shape this time because I've been sort of told to leave the weights alone for a little bit because of my arm. So it's just another challenge, really. Uh, I can't think what else. I had the kids. You now I've got the kids this weekend. Um, that's about me, really, I think. Uh, I'm laughing. Chris, Chris, uh, I don't know if anybody's seen up in the groups this week. Yeah. But Chris, Chris um, had a urostomy leak. And he lost his urostomy bag and he couldn't find it. Well, he's just put on here that he thinks that the dog may have eaten it. Oh, and yeah. I'm just, yeah. I'm oh, just asking, I'm, I'm just asking what breed of dog. <laughs> Probably a stuffy like mine, seeing as they like to eat well, things, they shouldn't. Albert, my boxer, when I had my first ileostomy, used to go bin diving for my used stoma bags, and he'd, he'd eat them. Oh, I'd no. come home, I'd come home from work, and I'd find it strewn oh, all no. over the, the lobby, which was his area. And oh, Louise, that, I think that's all right. <laughs> 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 Little too much information there. Oh no, Nox like lays on mine, but he's not really fussed by it. Oh, he's got a Dalmatian. Anyway. Although it's upstairs, our bathroom where we change our bags and stuff upstairs, and he doesn't uh, really go up there. So, Chris, I think you started something now. I woke up the other morning, and uh, I don't know whether whether I, I burped it in the night, but I woke up in the morning and I've reached down. I thought, oh my god, where's the where, where's the end gone? And it was open. Oh no! But 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 hadn't. Uh, it stayed empty from my previous. I don't, I don't know what had happened, but I thought that's mad. I <laughs> hope I don't start <laughs> opening it in the night again. You know what I mean? Sleep opening. I don't, yeah. I'll make, I'll make you laugh. Um, I went out Saturday night um, with my friend Joe, and um, with the heat and the way everything is, I don't really drink a lot when I go out now. I always limit myself to two or three just because I can't be dealing with the hydration hangover with a stoma i was gonna say this heat as well it's not even worth it yeah it, it's it's not it's not worth it so i had one vodka whilst i was out and i had two pints of cider well i was wearing these high-waisted wide-legged like clots and oh god i got off at the train station i had to empty my bag um and i went into the disabled toilets bear in mind i'm wearing heels trying to empty that bag in a pair of heels with these high-waisted trousers round my way. Ah, oh, Jesus, I was shoving toilet roll down the toilet so I didn't get any splash splash because obviously <laughs> they were pale pink. You know, I'm not, not walking out of the train station with, with, with you know, um, ileostomy splats all up my legs. And my friend was wetting herself and honest to God, the look that I was getting from the train station cards, bear in mind this is about half 11 at night, because I'm going to her. I said, do you think you've got issues? I said, trying to get your jeans off. I said, try standing standing up in a pair of heels. I said, tilting yourself forward so your bag's over the toilet, but your thighs are away from the toilet seat so you don't, flush, so you don't, don't like splash your legs right. And these two blokes look at me and they're like, what the hell is she what, going on about? <laughs> I was in stitches. I would never laugh so much in my life. But no, honest to God, best advice in this weather with, with, with any kind of ostomy, limit the alcohol or if you are drinking try and at least drink 
you know, soft drinks or water between each alcoholic drink because there is yeah. nothing worse. Oh, well, I'm, so, I'm so glad I'm sober. I'm so glad I'm sober. I don't have these issues. Yeah, I hardly drink at all now. Um, but today I went out with my friend and I did. She was driving. So I had two white wine spritzers because I thought adding in the lemonade and I had ice. So um, adding that in sort of helped a bit. But since having my stoma, I've actually gone out to bars. And I mean, I can drink quite a lot with my stoma. I don't get really, really drunk. It was actually, it was at the Purple Wings Ball when I was in Birmingham. And after the ball, we'd headed out to a bar and um, I ended up all doing a drink. And then I was like, I just need a glass of tap water. <laughs> and I was like, I can't believe I'm asking for one. <laughs> that was with Obar, was, that, that was the Obar, Obar yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I was like, I've just, I've got to because, but then I always, if I'm going out on a night like that, I will always have um, like rehydration stuff before I go out, when I get back in, before I go to sleep, and then again in the morning to keep myself topped up. How is everybody managing with their bags staying put and things like the, the base plate extenders and the no, adhesive rings with the heat? No problem at all with my Coloplast 20s. No, this no, is fine. Man. I've been fine. I've had a leak this week, but um, where I'm not sleeping very well, I didn't wake up to empty my bag, and it was full, and that caused a leak. But um, heat-wise, I've been okay. I yeah, haven't had only... a leak for over a year now. It's getting Sweet. quite I mean, close to that. that. That's just unheard of before. Mm. Um, the only thing that I found though is that the the barrier rings break down more, so trying to get the trying to get the residue off is a bit bit more tricky. Yeah, I, yeah, I found I found the same. I've been I've changed my ileostomy a little bit more often than I would, but it's still. But I haven't had any leaks. I use the base plate extenders as well, um, but that's mainly because of the prolapse. I don't I, normally it, do a ileostomy. It just amazes me because people are saying that the bags are sliding off in the heat and or they're not sticking. I, I can't, can't just don't get that, you know. No. It's kind of like if you're applying it to a sweaty or a wet stomach, then I get it, you know. But you, you fully notice. I mean, I, how does the sweat run underneath? I just. I do get, though, when you've got it down, especially because I wear a lot of high-waisted stuff, that bit underneath gets a bit sweaty. Although it depends what bag you have, because these, like I use them new salts bags, which is sort of a similar material to the Mio, I think. And I find these loads better in the heat. Like you don't get like horribly sweaty underneath or anything like that. No, but the that, only thing. That's the only thing I've, like I say, this summer it's been brilliant, but I have suffered with that before, but not to the point where it's peeling off. Be, per be perfectly honest, how many of you have abandoned the ostomy support? <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, you know what? I haven't. I, you know, I, 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 I haven't either. I, oh, I, I wear haven't. them not not at work because it's it's a warm environment anyway. But you know, like at the gym, if I'm, I always wear it. Yeah, I have to now because yeah, my hernia. Yeah. You know, I, I cough, I sneeze, and it hurts now. It physically hurts. I can feel it pop out. When when I cough and sneeze, so I have to sort of push it in. I only wear mine when I when I go out. So when I went to Exeter, I wore the Confis double layer boxes because they're quite breathable. Because there's two there's two holes you put yeah. the vein over. They're quite breathable, but I wear it because otherwise you can see I have a huge lump like here with the prolapse, and and mm. it just makes me feel better. And and I I, I was I wore light stuff so I didn't feel too hot. It's but a confidence get, thing in it. Yeah, if I if I like now I've got this on, I haven't got any on now. I only wear it when I'm really out. I don't really wear it when I'm in the house unless I'm doing hoovering, then I'll put it on. But um Yeah, because it's too warm, isn't it? Yeah, like but I when I go out, it's I think it's more like I, I it just it it spreads you everything. And it goes, up. Yeah, and it helps the it helps the prolapse pain if I if it's sort of contained. Mm -hmm. Oh, Graham, well done. He did the CCUK walk it on Saturday in Newcastle and raised over well £100. That's amazing. That's that's well, done, well done, Graham. Nice in the heat as well. And Paulette says that mine's oh, got pushed in the around, heat. didn't he? Yeah. Mine's Graham had the easy job, really, didn't he, if you think about it, Graham? <laughs> but it Sitting is there in the sunshine, getting, getting pushed <laughs> about. Oh, the right wave as he went past. 
We should we should thank all the helpers that Graham as well. I think. Paul, um, Paula, Paula said that mine stay on in the heat even when I go abroad. That's thanks to you, Louise, watching your video on changing your bag. Oh, that's no, nice. I just said, oh, shucks. <laughs> Oh, Paulette, just to say, if she asked me about rehydration sassos, when you go to Sainsbury's tomorrow, you've got to look for those ones. I've always found if you compare the um, levels of everything in the back, I think I've had like the Boots and Brand ones and stuff, but they're often better than Diorolite. They've got mm. they've got a bit more in them. Mm -hmm. um, I, got, I got a phone call off um, Trio Healthcare today. Now they've been Did trying to get hold of me for the last two weeks there, really? but otherwise they've been I've been up my dad's or I've been busy when they're phoned. Anyway, I was driving home, so I had about ten minutes spare, and, and I chatted to her on the phone, and she's really nice. I told her about the collar plus stuff and and the vanilla blush stuff that I do, and uh, so she wasn't trying to sell because they don't do bags. No, but she was she's basically saying about um uh, helping the NHS, which is what this show tonight is supposed to be about <laughs> anyway it's all about helping the nhs and and the fact that their sprays that they do she was saying they're cheaper than this brand and this brand and this brand and i said i'm not really fussed about the sprays i use brava because that's what i've always used i've used you know like when i've been to um exhibitions and i've mm. been i don't know advocating vanilla blush there there's always been stands there and you always walk away with a bag full of goodies a bag full of pearls you know to thicken mm. out but um, different sprays to adhesive removers, and she was telling me that their their adhesive removers are removers are about either about nine pound, I think they are, and all the others are like in the tens and elevens. Mm. So, you know, I'm definitely going to have a think and, and right, uh, change. Yeah, change. if it's saving well, you know, you know a couple of quid every time, yeah. it's got to be worth it. Because I always I spray. One minute, sorry, Nat. I spray myself and then. I wipe afterwards so that there's no residue of the spray before I put my bag down anyway. So it kind of doesn't matter which spray I use. I'd rather use the cheaper one. Yeah, as long as it works. Thank you. Me yeah, and, exactly. Um, me and Steve, I got, I got sent a load of samples from Trio, and they are really, really lovely. I think Bullen, who I get my deliveries from, I think they're sort of like twins. So a lot of the products they sort of push and try and get you to try a treat, not push because they're not like that at all. But the products that they ask you if you want to try are a lot of trio ones. Um, and they sent me a load of the barrier spray. And me and Steve both use the Comfortech Silas one. And it's absolutely, I really barely ever have problems with my skin. It's fantastic. Um, between that and I think the bag and whatever I do, it just works. But we've yeah. been trying the trio one and it's absolutely brilliant and it dries like within about 10 seconds whereas the yeah. Comfortech one takes ages to dry and we sort of have to sit fanning and stuff um you're on about barriers one, barriers spray now that's the barrier spray yeah that we put on before mm. the bags but um yeah hands down it's brilliant and i'm going to be switching to that one now especially in this heat because obviously waiting for it to dry anyway is bad enough but then when you're getting hot you don't want it to be getting any more sweaty once you've got out of the shower the bathroom's like humid enough as it is yeah i don't so use about, it all the time i've got about three off sorry sorry right it's fine it's okay. no carry on no it's right i've got to go and empty it's good i've got about i've got uh, about three or four different um barrier sprays and creams in my drawer that I, I never really use i kind of only need my skin only gets some um, damaged if i wear the bag for four days plus so i, I change every three days and my stomach my, my abdomen stays good so do you know oh sorry Steve, i'll let you finish sorry <laughs> no I'm, I'm done i'm done you know since you know since i've changed bags because obviously we've all changed bags now haven't we from what we was originally using and it's amazing really sort of the last six months to a year how much life has sort of changed for us by finding the right product mm -hmm. for us absolutely so you know, go pre-October, I was changing daily because my output was eating the bags and I was sore skin and all sorts. And the thing is now, even with the material of the Pelican bags, I'm still going three to four days between bag changes. I'm probably only ordering one. I'm ordering two stoma boxes, every, two boxes of stoma bags every other month and one with the month in between because I don't ever want to leave myself without an emergency stash just in case um, mm -hmm. something does happen. So I always try and keep like five just in case I've had a bad bag change or something. 
but it's amazing how even getting through the summer how none of us are having issues yeah or struggling with the skin and you you think when we started like bag roulette did you think that we'd be where we are now with oh, of... i did you know because it's Although not like uh i've been so great not... for bag roulette since my stoma decided to suck itself in the other week yeah i was going to tell that off because she was using a convex bag going, but you can't use convex i was like no don't say nothing <laughs> no it's happened twice and um, it just happened that I had to, I've got none left now. So if it happens again, I'll be stuck. But um, I literally just, I changed it that morning and then I changed it again in the evening. I didn't leave it on for very long because it does hurt. Like I end up with it. I don't know how you got, I mean, obviously I know you need it, but, um, and I don't particularly, but um, it makes me ache. So I can't leave it on for too long, but it definitely does the job and gets Do you know, to put back out know again. I was slightly curious about flat bags and to see whether or not I'd be able to use a flat bag. Bear in mind, I've been using convex for, for nearly the last two years. So I tried a flat bag. I tried the flat base plate. Oh, God, I, I, abandoned, I abandoned shit within three days because of, um, because of the leaks that I was getting because my stoma put, likes to hide. And, you know, like you said, yours retracted in that. That's what mine does, but mine does it all the time. So without the convex, I'd and if if I was back to a flat bag, I'd I'd be having leaks all the time. So I think it is really important, you know, just to reiterate that your stoma nurses are there for a reason, mm -hmm. and you know, there's a reason why your stoma nurse gives you a convex bag, but there's also a reason why your stoma nurse gives you a flat bag. Flat so bag, if you're exactly. if, if, yeah, if you're on the flat base and you're experiencing leaks, see your stoma nurse because it could be a possibility you need convex. Often yeah. I've found a lot of companies will not send you convex bags unless they mm. speak to your nurse or your nurse refers for it, but not all the time. But do you know why that you is? Just be able to phone up and order them. But do you know why that is? Because because it can cause a prolapse. If you use Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You use a convex bag on a on a on a, a when that isn't flush, it can cause a prolapse. And there are a few people that have prolapses because they have used the wrong bag. And that's why it's... It's, when it's we, a good thing. It's a safety thing isn't it, that they've got in place. But Yeah, I think it, it works well. Like, I think it's good that you can't get it unless you go through the stoma nurses because they they are the ones that see your stomas. But I understand, you know, when you want to try products, it's it might be frustrating to go through stoma. But it's so important to have a good... Uh, continue to have a rapport with stoma nurses when problems occur. Like it, like when I first had my my prolapse, I didn't have a clue what it was. I called one one one, but when I went in and they checked it and they they sort of I, I needed to go back because if I tried to struggle with myself and say so you need them to help you, so they know, they could also know because they were the ones that referred me to my surgeons. I'm like she needs emergency surgery because it's changed color. Like the amount of times mine changed color and I had to have emergency was quite high. So you also need that, and I think it's it's important to have that rapport as well. Yeah. Especially in the first six months, like mm -hmm. they were just my go to. My all the stoma nurses I've been in contact with have always been fantastic. Like I couldn't couldn't fault them at all. But um but no, I think since I've been in Derby I've only seen mine a couple of times. Um and it is something I need to sort of I think just touch base with her again soon. Mm. Yeah, same here. Although I'm having no problems, I just don't want to lose that like you say rach it's just checking it and just yeah yeah i kind of saw sure. this time this uh, i've met some lovely nurses from exeter and and i just thought it made me realize that they actually when they don't hear from you they actually want to know that you you're st you're all right you know because they have so mm. many i've been just like a phone call to go do you know what i'm doing okay i'm just checking in yeah i don't need to see you don't need Ra to see rachel's you. met my stoma nurse haven't you rach yeah she's lovely in copenhagen <laughs> yeah she's oh lovely. wow yeah, yeah I, I give her a shout out on stage. I did. <laughs> it, was, it was all having a dance. It was all having a dance in the disco. It was it, surreal. She was really proud of you because when when we were at the when we were at the airport, you could see that she was so proud of him. Like when he was on the stage, and she was like, "Well proud." Yeah. It must be weird no. for him having like having somebody that a patient that's on stage and talking and changing the bag in front of everybody. You know what, she, she, mm -hmm. you know Nick, Nikki, the one you met, uh, right, she was the one that actually um, put me on to Blake. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I, think she, I think she had a bit of a crush on him and she had like loads of flyers in, oh. in, in her uh, office stroke surgery type thing. 
and she gave me one. And I obviously got a couple of the belts from Blake, like you know, they were free, and, and I've still got them now. They, they, they were brilliant, but uh, now they, they, my stoma nurses have been awesome. They've been amazing. I can't, I can't fault either one of them. Um, on the note of stomas, before we go over to why we're thankful for the NHS, just a quick shout out. Um, Vicky Palmer, um, who's also a um, double ostomer, um, she set up an ostomy support group up at um, Guys and St Thomas's Hospital. Um, the first one is run on Wednesday, the 18th of July. It's called Time to Talk. There's going to be dietitians there, counsellors. Um, there's going to be places, things like Colostomy UK. I think there's a rep from Purple Wings there as well. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, it's uh, it's 3.30 until 5.30. I could go I've because it's only... It. Yeah. Because the boys are on school holidays, so I can't go. Um, but yeah, it's it's um, three thirty to five thirty. There will be quite a few of us there, and I think it's brilliant that Vicky's managed to get this set up and that it's being mm -hmm. opened. Is it Vicky wider. and Ira? Is it Ira? Because Ira is a joint. A bit. They, yeah. Both of them have, have started. It's Ira and and uh, I don't know if I'm saying it right. And Vicky. But yeah. It, uh, it's really great because they both have two and uh Eva I think has um I can't remember what her combination is, but I think it it's good because it's it's doing it for all of them and can't, I can't I won't be able to yeah. yeah, I won't be able to come to this one, but I'm gonna try and come to the next one. But I think okay. it's well, it, is it gonna be like a monthly thing? Um I don't know. I can ask sure. I can ask Vicky when I see her, I'm not too sure, but I know this is the first one and I think it's the first time that something that has been done like this, especially up at the likes of guys and St Thomas's and the actual event, even though it says guys and St Thomas's Hospital, it is actually at Guys Hospital and it's in the South Fork Green. And I know where it is because I spend most of my time in outpatients up that side of the hospital. So uh, I know where the conference rooms are. I think um, it's, it's needed. I think it's needed because that hospital is very specialised, and I think it's um, it's good that it's good they got a support group there. I'm really proud of them. I think yeah, it's, definitely. It's good getting that. That was a good gig. Yeah, help a no, lot of people. It's, it, it's really good and it's needed. Um, so um, we're going into, so obviously, as today, going back 70 years, the NHS was founded and it was set up. It started out as several hospitals across England and Wales, and it just grew and grew and grew. And they used to charge one shilling for prescriptions, which used to be the equivalent of 5p in today's money. <laughs> Don't we wish we was back in oh. <laughs> yeah. Um So, yeah, um, would it would that would it be five pence in today's money though? I know a shilling was five p, yeah. mm -hmm. but it's probably probably be about six quid nowadays with inflation and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And what so, average prescriptions now? Eight pound ten or something like that. No, they're eight, eight nine. Eight, eight, on, they're nearly nine pounds. They're eight pound eighty. Are they? Yeah. So it's been that long since I bought a prescription. I used to I used to buy the prepaid. I think it was like uh, ten pound a month. I think it was. Yeah, I pay ten pound twenty five a month for my PCP card. However, once I've had the Barbie butt surgery, I don't think I have to pay for my medication anymore because my ileostomy is permanent, and I don't have a choice in the matter. <laughs> yeah, but see, see, my ileostomy is permanent. I haven't had the bar while well, the Ken butt yet, but it's permanent because I'm not having. So you could actually have mm -hmm. a permanent. You could call yeah, yours permanent you, now. Yeah. And you don't I, actually. My my stomach nurse brought me all the forms, but because yeah, I was already claiming it form. for years because of obviously I've been ill forever, so I was already getting it. But yeah, she brought me all the forms and was like, "Yep, you get this now." I still pay for my prescriptions. <laughs> you shouldn't have to right now. <laughs> but, I, but obviously, I've got the PCP card, so I don't have to worry about it. I just fill that in on the back of my forms, and it 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 goes off. Um, so I think all of us have got reasons to be thankful for the NHS as a whole. I mean, me, I've had septic shock. I've had fecal peritonitis. I've nearly died <laughs> several times. Um, all my medication, the immunosuppressants, the fact that they deal with my illness and you don't really have to think about it, do you? You just go to the hospital appointment, you get seen, you get given the medication and then you get sent on your way home. And obviously as we do complain about the amount of time we spend up at hospital and having to go to this appointment and this med and everything else. But what would we be like if we didn't have that service? Oh, it'd be, it'd be horrific. You, you, you know you'd, what I think you see in the groups, stuff. don't you? about like especially like in america and stuff where they Absolutely. have to pay and i think 
it can only make you appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. I think it's you know, you, like it's, it's where you, you know, you could be to have a baby over there. It's madness, absolute um, madness. I mean, you, you're going to stay at home, aren't you? Unless you're really at death's door, because mm-hmm. you, you just can't afford to be ill. No, that's it. I it's seriously a terrible think, state of. I seriously think that the amount of money that all my my prolapse surgeries and all my sepsis bouts and all my many other things that I've added in the last 10 years, I seriously think it's got to be close to a million pounds. I am I am so grateful for the NHS. Yes, it's not perfect. We all know it's not perfect. But I think when you look at the our American friends and you see how the struggles and in mm-hmm. at the moment in a double bag of groups, there's a like children, they're struggling to get money to pay you to uh, products for children. And it just absolutely breaks your heart. And and I just think I mean, we are so lucky to have what we have. And I, I used to, I've but done both sides. I've worked in the NHS and I've been a patient in the NHS. And yeah, you know, it's not perfect, but I think I wouldn't be here. It's very simply if it wasn't for them. I wouldn't yeah. be here. I wouldn't be able to, I, I wouldn't be alive now. And I think it's like sometimes it's putting it into perspective that they are all stretched. Like that hospital program was an insight. It, uh, it was such a good program because it, it yeah. put it makes you realise the restrict the, the problems that they have trying to fit everybody in they're struggling because they can't do what they ultimately want to do because they want to they they want to give better care but because they have like their own financial and and staff restraints and everything it's difficult for them and it's a it's um well, I it think makes you wonder what why a nurse goes into it you know with the amount of work and the workload and the hours that they have to do it makes you wonder you know there must be a real love of the job it, there. it mm. takes it's, it takes a special kind of person to do that really does. You, you, you'll find and this is no insult to hcas so obviously the healthcare assistants that are also within the hospital group but nurses are very empathetic they're very sympathetic and nurses are very caring even when they are stretched and i think they don't get paid enough to put up with what they put up with. They really don't. No, they don't. I, I think HCAs are as well, though, Louise. Yeah. I, would say, I would say HCAs I've are. Some are just, HCAs. I've had some brilliant, and they've they've probably taken up the care where the nurses haven't had time to. And this I is it. When the nurses are stretched, one, sometimes you have one or two nurses, mm. proper qualified nurses on a ward, and it's up to the HCAs to do all the... Exactly. Like when you have... Your bag, when I first had my bag, somebody was having to empty it because they were having to measure it and I couldn't get out of bed for the first, like, two or three days or whatever. And, um, I mean, sometimes, to be fair, when it was quiet, the nurse would come and do it, but often those jobs are left up to the HCAs Mm -hmm. and they were just brilliant. And I I met one, the last time I was in hospital, and she's actually written a post from our blog a couple of weeks ago, um, her... I was on the ward for my hip, so it was a um, orthopedic ward, nothing to do with my stoma, but obviously my stoma care was all part of being in there and stuff, um, even though once I've got crutches, I've just about managed myself. But this woman came in to me and her husband's just had an ileostomy due to UC. Um, and then she was like, hang on, hang on, the night nurse that's on, her husband has just had a reversal. <laughs> um He's got Crohn's and he's now got a J pouch. I think that was the right thing. And um, she's just been fantastic. And we've kept in touch since I left hospital. Like I say, she's just written a guest post for me. She's doing a skydive for CCUK. She didn't invite me to do it with her. But I was like, it's very lovely, but no, thank you. (laughs) I will share, share your, just giving link and all that as much as I can. But um, but yeah, she wrote a post um, just sort of explaining her husband's story and stuff and oh she was just absolutely amazing and there's been so many i don't think i've ever really had a terrible luckily a terrible experience in any of my stays i can't uh, that's I that's Lee. i think i think that's that's amazing right because i've got a similar story so when i was in last time on ward 15 that's my urology ward i won't use names but on the urology ward and they they know me well and this one nurse when i had my urostomy three years ago we, she started the same time I was in for the three months. We knew each other really well. She she was under the dialysis unit. Well, when I went in this time, her husband had bowel cancer in the January and ended up with a stoma. So when I was in isolation, she spoke to me. She went, your blog has helped him so much. I didn't realise actually how much you do. 
and and it was just so lovely and like and now it's i think she he's told her like about the kind of award and stuff and like and it's passed back but it's it she was like i never realized she said although i see patients with stomas all the time seeing him and how the process of it is like giving her a bigger insight yeah and it's, uh, it's funny how it can change because she said it was never on his radar about about stomas and it wasn't on hers but then it's kind of changed when you have somebody i don't know it's just it's amazing how things yeah how people can like come into your life and yeah yeah but no it's uh like i say i really can't i've maybe had a couple of bad experiences not completely neglectful or anything like that not ever that bad um but i can honestly say 99 percent of the stuff i've come across in the hospitals from the nurses the doctors the cleaners who come in and have a chat with you and yeah just brilliant i even had the ward sister um when i'd had my surgery and i was on like the post-surgical ward because they'd got like the hdu bit there and then some bays um she she'd upset us actually my friend who's got crohn's had come in to visit me and she was telling us about her daughter who'd got ulcerative colitis but then started going on about how she's got so much better because she's doing this diet and blah, 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 and you know how you get and you're just like oh god like yeah. i'm really glad <laughs> she's doing well but that isn't a cure it doesn't work for everybody it may not work i hope it works for her forever but uh, we were just a bit like oh and i think she sort of realized her mistake a bit later when she was like i think i really upset your friend he wasn't very happy with me but then mm -hmm. on the tuesday it was do you know the is it rick sack or something the the emptying thing yeah that, yeah the, the rick, rick sack yeah well the lady of the husband that it's like a husband and wife team that did it wasn't yeah. it she was on and so was i think oh, this, was so this morning yeah yeah i saw that morning. yeah well, she that. was on her day off but she phoned the ward and was like please can you get natalie to put this morning on wow. um because there's people with talking about stomas and um, oh I already knew about it anyway, because obviously it was all over the Facebook groups, it was happening and stuff. And I didn't end up watching it live, but I caught up with it later on that day. Um, Is that the one that yeah. talks in your trousers? Yeah, no, like, it's like a belt and it's belt. like a box. Yeah, yeah. It's like really I, good for camping and things. See, see that time, like that. I, di I didn't even know there were any Facebook groups existed. So I just saw it because I watched this morning. But that was when I was totally oblivious that there were any groups on Facebook. <laughs> I had no idea. Well, you think that's funny. I'm going glamping up in Wales at the end of this month. So uh, I might get carried off by sheep at two, three o'clock in glamping, the morning. It, glamping, may not all be, that. it may not be glamping so much with a stoma. It, it, we went camping on the floor. <laughs> I, I, I bought I'm, a I'm sorry, a Steve. I'm a, bit, I'm, a bit, right. I'm, I'm a bit of high maintenance. I require a bed. <laughs> I, need, I, need, I need serenading. <laughs> it's, just, it's just the fact that you're kneeling everywhere. You're kneeling. You're, you're walking out on your knees. It's kind of, you know, but you know, it was good. So, somebody emailed me today, right? And they said to me, oh, um, don't worry about getting carried off by sheep at two in the morning because if you've heard, if you've heard the rumours, the sheep stay away from the humans, right? I'm sure you've heard the rumours. Do you know what? It actually took me about five minutes to actually tweak what they meant. <laughs> so I've gone through this entire email. I've typed back the reply and everything else. And then, you know, when that light switch and, just goes... It went, it's yeah, gone. the penny's dropped. And I was like, oh! <laughs> Welsh person <laughs> sitting right here. That's what I was to say. Can I just say something that Steve, Nasty Steve Steve's made a comment? Yeah, I was just... I would... Looking. I, he said, "He said I would be dead without the NHS. Simple as that. My TPN is a thousand pound per bag, and I have one a day. That's not including all my equipment and supplies, plus all my meds and stoma stuff. And I spent twenty-one months in hospital. Um, no way could I afford private. It's bloody rubbish that just took a black bag into your trousers if you need to. No need. Oh, to that's the. Oh. He's on about that Rick's like thing. He's oh, is it? With it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wrote. I wrote. I won't buy it because I think, well, I don't really need it. I've got everything I need. It's a bit, just... it's a bit exotic, isn't it? When, yeah. I think, I think mm. when you've had an ileostomy for the amount of time as we've had them, you know, you could, you could change it walking a tight rope, couldn't you? Yeah. yeah. Do you know what? Do you know what I, I mean? sort of get, I sort of get it though. For people that may not be as able-bodied or 
you can sort of get the notion of it and why yeah. people would use it but i think it is it is a novelty more than anything because come off of it most of us are pros at changing our bags laying down or standing up with lack of facilities anyway you know what we do balance it on our yeah. heads exactly i just i've, ch I've changed i've ch changed mine in the mine. pub toilet in the pub toilet where there's no lights they've put they've turned the lights off because people are using it to uh did, to have did drugs you, yeah and i've actually used my I've had to just stand my phone up on the side of the on the window, oh, and God. and literally change it in the dark. You know. Did so. you did you aim straight and through? Did it get straight on in there? <laughs> straight in there, no worries at all. <laughs> the, the worst, the worst bag change. The worst, the worst bag change. I've changed mine. It is Birmingham train station. When it when oh, I went, ended up with when Steve awesome. had the kids and. I because of prolapse, no ice, nobody would give me any ice. I couldn't get the prolapse back in. I had to lie on the disabled floor, like not it wasn't nice. I had to lie to try and get it in. It wasn't going in. In the end, I had to, I had put another bag on, wouldn't stick, and then I went to Steve's and I think I burst out crying and it was about this big. Then I do you remember that, Steve? I was like, I do, yeah. <laughs> that was after I saw Natalie. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I was like, oh, it's a bit I remember that day. Get in the shower, stop moaning, get in the bloody shower. Oh, and I was covered. I was covered. It was just everybody being so unhelpful, though. When you were asking oh, for ice, I was like, "Ice is frozen water. It's not expensive." Like, I, I should get. I should have asked for sugar next time. Like, I forget that yeah, sugar. That's a good idea. That, yeah. that, that would be better. Um, Always carry a bag of sugar on you. Yeah, I have now. Don't get some of them little sachets from I, somewhere. Don't get searched I, on the way into pubs and stuff. I have. <laughs> I have in my it's in my emergency kit now, so I, I I've it got really? it in. Yeah, yeah, I've got it in there. The sugar, I've got the sugar in it. Do you know but, what though? The amount of places now that you have to be careful taking your kit into because they bloody search you. And especially with scissors. Got, yeah, especially got a pair of scissors in your back. Mm -hmm. I had I had a bouncer in the toilet. I've got I've gone into the, I've gone into the toilet in a, in a pub in town, and uh, there was two cubicles, and I'm waiting by the cubicle. And now this bouncer's watching me, thinking. Are you going to go to the toilet? I'm waiting for these cubicles. And I didn't say a word to him. The one lad's come out. The chain's flushed. And I've gone in. And I'm trying to lock the door. Now, the bolt won't go in. It's about an inch lower. So I'm lifting up the door and bending the frame to get the... And he's gone, is everything all right in there? And I've opened the door and I've just showed him my stoma. I've said, piss off. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? I'd never seen him all night then. He, he must have been so embarrassed. And, and I've, I've, you know, I've done my stoma, but uh, it, it's just, you know, people just they don't know, do they? And unless you tell them, but he, he didn't know where to put himself. You know, it's like, it's like phoning, phoning in work. If, you know, if I've got a problem with my stoma before you had to phone in your gaffer. Now, if, if your gaffer or your boss didn't really know what a stoma was, he's going, oh, oh okay, okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Supposed to be like talking about ladies' problems to a man, <laughs> you know what I mean? But now we have a, we have an absence line, and and you phone them up, and then they ring you back just to make sure that you you're not abroad or something. <laughs> Steve's just said the worst place he's had to change is a train, and I think that's probably mine too. Train toilets, a hideous, oh, it's disgusting. Empty. Never mind having to change your bag. Mm. Airplanes are quite scary as well because uh, if you if you don't put loo roll down and then you empty your bag, it's, uh, it, you know, the way it just goes, mm. whoosh, and then it's all left down the side and you can't, you got no way of, and whoever's waiting outside is going to see all that thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So I've learned my lesson with that. You have to put a bit of loo roll down first just to take oh. it with it. I think the worst one ever is that I've actually changed mine. I'd actually gone out like walking across the freaking Lake District. And my bag leaked and I had all my stuff with me and trying to change that in the middle of nowhere on a log with no wet wipes. Because this this was obviously back bit pre days before I knew about wet wipes. So obviously this is, this is back in like 2010. I've got a freaking open wound. <laughs> oh God. I've got, got, got an incisional hernia and I'm trying to change this freaking bag. And I'm going through, you know, because I used to have the adhesive removal wipes then. And, you know, when you're trying to clean it off and I've got a bottle of water, but I can't open the lid off the bottle of water because then I'm going to contaminate it because I've got it all over me. <laughs> I've got it all over my hands. Oh, I think all in end. Because, you know, when your stoma goes off and goes off on one, it doesn't stop. I think I actually sat there for about 45 minutes in the middle of frigging nowhere 
Just I've been really good like that. My my stomach is well behaved. It knows when to shut up. Oh no! I've the other day, I found oh, it. I've I had the, the occasion <laughs> when I'm finished in the shower, and I'm just about to dry. You know, I'm just about to dry my my head, my back. Uh, go and get get, get the uh, dry wipes, put over the stomach, and then all of a sudden I've got to wash my feet again. <laughs> yeah, but do you know what I do? I always keep a bag. But Paulette was saying that she's had to empty her bag in the woods before. It's a challenge standing up. I always carry a bottle of water with me, and that is purely because I have to go to Canterbury and back to get Maisie, and because we're always all over the shop. If I've got to do an emergency empty... And especially if I'm wearing my brand new white converse <laughs> and I've got her empty in the woods. Just I always way. keep a bottle of water with me to wash my shoes off just in case I just in case I be same. <laughs> right, I gotta go because Love Island. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, I this commitment is last week I was in bed, I didn't get I'm gonna book you in for cancelling. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't. I'm sorry. I know it's I, awful, but I'm sorry. I love you all, but I'm got. I'm got. <laughs> I'll speak to you later, right? Like. <laughs> it's so bad. It's bad, isn't it? Hey, see what oh, I have to deal with. I can't go on Twitter or anything at the minute because it's just one oh. of it. Love oh, it, and I'm trendy. sorry, Rachel. I love you, but what a crock of shit! <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Do you know what I'm watching at the moment? It's in Spanish, so I have to watch the subtitles, but I'm watching <laughs> Night and Day on Channel 4, just for a bit of culture and for a bit of Spanish acting. It's Spanish <laughs> drama. Isn't it, like, really weird? No, just, it's not weird. I haven't got to the drama. weird bit yet. I didn't realise there were so many episodes. There's me thinking I'm watching episode one last night, episode four later. <laughs> episode one or episode one? One. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bed last night. Can we go to Barcelona at the end of August? I really want to go to Barcelona now. And he's going, no, we need new carpet. And I'm like, I want to go to Barcelona. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Carpet can wait. But no, this whole Love Island thing, for, for realistic expectations, for what relationships are meant to be like or mm -hmm. what human beings are meant to be like, they need to put in a couple of overweight girls, a couple of pigeon chest lads, a couple of people with acne, yeah, they need to put real really people. It's, it's just... And the whole, like, switching <laughs> hey, don't... I just, oh, or, it's not teaching. Or really me. good back hair, what you're on about. Or really good back hair, either way. They need to stick real <laughs> people in there. At the end of the day, that many people that have had that much Botox and fillers in their face where you don't know if they're actually smiling or grimacing. I couldn't watch it. I really couldn't. And apologies for anybody on here that does watch Love Island, but no, I, no, 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 absolutely okay. no apologies, no apologies at all. <laughs> no, I'm not apologising. I'll stand by you on that one all the way. I'm going to no, start a, 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 gr Do you a know group. What? I was actually going to start write a blog post today about Love Island. <laughs> Do it. Do it. I'll, I'll, uh, more from the fact of I just think that you know that like, all these teenage girls and stuff that are watching it. And they're seeing these girls get treated like absolute rubbish by guys. And I just think, what, what, what is it teaching Come off girls it, to put up with? Some of the women ain't much better either. Well, one of the women's supposedly a bit of a tramp as well. And, do you know what I mean? But I just think, I just find it because it's more teenage girls that watch it. But just in general, I just think it's teaching young people really, really bad But the thing is, look how, it's just cheap, it's cheap telly, isn't it? It's like, it's like Big Brother. It's cheap telly, it's and like, people you, buy into it. I love the very first Big Brother. You remember the first one? And yeah. It was almost, it was almost like an experiment. experiment, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I agree. But, but then it's just about getting famous. famous I mean, I would love to go on Big Brother because I would get up in the middle of the night and I would have a relationship with the camera. I would actually talk to the people who were sitting on the settee at home and tell them what I'm going to do. You know, I'd go and wee in people's beds and things like that <laughs> just to cause a bit of drama, you know what I mean? And only you at home would know what was going on. Okay, I'd be called into the into the diary room a few times. But you know what? I bet, I bet you I wouldn't get thrown out of the room. You know what I mean? Do you know what? Now I I wrote I wrote a post because you know when I had a spray tan done, done last week, I wrote mm -hmm. a post about it. Oh God, I got ripped a new one Friday night. Um, the knickers I wore were too big, so I had a rather big visible knicker line. My <laughs> argument was was if I'd if I'd been suntanning on the beach, so everybody with an ostomy, if you'd been suntanning on the beach, I would have still have had bikini bottoms on. 
but admittedly the bikini bottoms wouldn't have had the lacy insert that I had on the front and the back of the knickers sprayed out by spray tan guys. <laughs> Do you know what I did once? I think it was, it might have been for the Purple Wings Ball. Or no, it wasn't. It was Get Your Belly Out. <laughs> I had a spray tan and I'd left, I'd had a blood test. I'd left the little round plaster on. And obviously <laughs> took it off that night and then was like, oh crap, I'd got this little round circle <laughs> where I'd have my blood taken. So for any of you, any of you watching, you can get a spray tan done with an ostomy bag. I, I rung up the salon. It was a first for me because I'd had them done and I hadn't had them done since the surgery. So oh, I've had lots arm. since my surgery and all the ladies I've had, my the first lady I had doing it had always done my spray tans before that anyway. Um, and she was fantastic. She knew about the hospital and everything. Um, but um, since I moved to Derby, I found another lady and she did it and I explained about the bag and I just said, look, I've had them before. I just basically fold it in half to make it as small as possible. Um, and it was absolutely fine. Yeah, your bag could, doesn't could come they, off. Could they do? Could they do? Um, you know, like if you if you used to make sure that you didn't eat, so there was no output coming out, and you just sort of covered it with almost like a tissue. Would they? Could they do that? Probably. Like spray yeah, don't have to. Really, to be yeah. honest, most most people that most of the ladies that do the do the spray tans will tell you that they've seen a damn sight worse than you standing there with your ostomy bag stands now. I've never had one, you see, so I don't know how it's done. Is it done by hand or? No, it's done. It's it's done by spray. It's like a spray pump thing that they just. Try. No, I mean I, when I say by hand, I don't mean like a brush or a roller. <laughs> I mean like, is it a machine that does it, or is the person actually holding the spray? Yeah, the person um, has to hold it. Holding holding the machine, it's like an air compressor okay. that sprays it out. It's a bit like um, a spray gun. You know, on, on like a turning thing, like a like you a stand, kebab. No, no, no. You stand in like a tent thing. Um, okay. So if you did have your stoma, they normally put a towel in the bottom anyway. But you could always put your own towel in. So if you did have output, it would just be going on your towel that you would yeah. then clean. So it wasn't sort of getting on anything of theirs. But I'm pretty sure they wouldn't mind. Uh huh. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not having any ideas. I was just wondering because it's something that I'm surprised you didn't get one done for the the, uh, the calendar. <laughs> you know Steve's what? Just... Uh, never give it a second thought. I had my back shaved, and that, and that was it. Steve's just made a good point, actually, about stoma caps and just popping one of those on before you're having the spray Yeah, that's on. another idea. Somebody, what was somebody doing the other day and they'd popped a stoma cap on? And I was like, oh, that's really handy to, like, for things like spray tans or whatever. They might have just been sunbathing in their garden and they put it on because they were getting tan lines. Best advice would be, though, yeah. with the moisturiser, give it at least a five centimetre wide berth all the way around your uh, base plate. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because if that gets in your bag slides off, that's going <laughs> to, yeah. <laughs> right, um, we're coming to an end for this evening. We have gone over. So next week, I believe it is the start of fertility month, I believe. I know. I completely forgot it was July this week. Um, but yes, after the dog chewed my notebook up and all my notes, I will redo them and and sort it out. <laughs> but um, we are covering fertility next week. I'm not too sure which bits we're covering because it's Nat's baby this month. Yes, um, I'll get it sorted over the weekend. And so, uh, um, yeah, apparently. we would. Yeah, we will get it sorted. Nat will get it sorted. <laughs> so we will say thank you so much for watching. It's been lovely having you. Please, for the love of God, don't watch Love Island. It's good that Rachel's no, doing don't it. Do it. Means she stays off of social media, but don't do it. <laughs> yeah, she gets an hour of free time, but killing but, um, off her brain cells. <laughs> but um, we would like to say thank you for watching, and we will see you all again next week. We'll good, night. Bye. good night. Good night.